Hi friends, I'm Olga Kirsch and welcome back to my studio. Today we are going to paint something very spring, something very blossoming. Despite all this snow outside, it's, it's the end of March and it drives me crazy, honestly. But anyway, let's think about spring and paint really, really beautiful magnolia, magnolia flowers, magnolia blossoms. Let's start. First of all, let's make a very, very draft drawing of our future magnolia branch. I like to add a lot of curves. And on that stage, what you need to do is to draw the main branch to set up the direction and maybe a few side branches and think through where will be the biggest flowers placed. I think one of the biggest flowers would be on the bottom and about intersection of one third. So it will be in about this area. All the rest I'm not going to draw because I really like the free hand painting. Let's pick up our colors. For today, I, I would really like to paint with granulated colors and I use dusk pink from Van Gogh and I will use dusk violet. And of course, I uh, will use uh, just usual Queen Acridon Rose and Alizarin Crimson. So different shades of pink. If you do not have granulated colors, that's, uh, that's also completely fine. I switch to a bigger brush. And let's, let's try it out. So dusk pink goes first. I will set up. I would like to paint few buds right on the top. So with the tip of the brush, with the tip of the brush, I start to paint the top bud. It's in principle, it's painting more like brush strokes. I have my second brush, uh, brush next to me. It will be just clean brush. And with my clean and damp brush, I go on the other side, a little bit aside of this bud and soften the edges. Once I need to add a little bit more of contrast, a little bit more of color for the bottom, I add a drop with my second brush. It's very handy if you have two brushes which are slightly different, for example, red and blue, because sometimes when you're in the flow, it's, it often happens when I uh, mix them. And <laughs> let's challenge ourselves and take the third brush. For branches, I, I would like to paint right away. I will use per perlin green. Or you could make a mix, your own mix of green colors. For example, phthalo green is great uh, when you mix it with burnt sienna. It gives very pleasant vintage touch. I do not go very far away with um, painting the brush. I want for now to mix all these colors in the bud. So <laughs> I put aside my green brush. brush brush, brunch, brush, <laughs> and I start to paint another, another bud. For the variety, it's nice to, um, it's nice <laughs> to add different brush strokes and different colors and different sizes, of course, of the buds. I I think it's time to add some really pink color. It's quinacridone rose mixed with our dusk pink with granulated colors. And as I said, it's, um, it's uh, granulated colors are very fun to paint, but if you do not have them, there are 
<laughs> there are, it's really possible to paint beautiful pictures just with your basic palette. And I usually do that. Uh, magnolia branches, they have very, very special texture. Um, you, of course, you noticed that. It has a lot of knots and a lot of uneven parts. Sometimes some branches are really dry. And to achieve that idea, I sometimes apply a little bit more pressure on my brush. I release the pressure and apply again a little bit of pressure. Let's paint a few side branches. Just, just like this. But, uh, of course, we, we are here to paint beautiful magnolia flowers, not branches. So let's finally paint more and more and more flowers and buds. I, it's really very tempting to add one more bud right here. So now I mixed in my bra 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 brushes. No problem. I soften the edge, um, one of the edges. Uh, another tip, paint a small sunshine in one of the top of your picture. So you always remember from which part sun shines and which side is lighter than the other side. And so when you paint it, you could add more deep and contrast color to the other side and that will give you that realistic feeling and you soften the other side you see i'm not painting details i'm painting with brush strokes now we are getting close to our future main big bud i'm still thinking how i will do it maybe I, I split it into two parts. That's part of the process. Let's start with very light, a light, mm, light quinacridone rose, and paint the front petal, one of the front petals of magnolia. Um, firstly, we just set up everything. And as we paint very, very light, it will be, we will have enough time and options to make corrections if something goes, something goes wrong, for example, that happens, but it's not the end of the world. So with big, bold brush strokes, I set up the main bud. And now comes the fun part. I switch to my granulated colors to the dusk pink and I go along the bottom line and add shades and deeper colors into the bottom part of course first of all and I try to divide a few petals remember that the darker area will be on our right side because of the sunshine and I add a little bit of depth into the into the bud and again it's just brush strokes the fun part with granulated colors comes few minutes later for example here you could see it started to split the particles of the color they are splitting out and create and they create that beautiful texture but it takes a little bit of time and that makes painting slightly unpredictable and very 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 fun and unique Uh, if you do not want to spend a fortune on, uh, in granulated colors, you could buy two or three basics, something pink, something neutral, and something green. That will be enough for you to add them into mixes. And that will work pretty as well. 
So let's add a little bit more of depth into the into this bud. I want to uh, everything be uh, a little bit um, fluffy, a little bit vivid, without big, mm, mm, without straight borders, etc., etc. So now I switch to my third brush. I hope you you follow my hands, follow follow my hands, and I uh, proceed with adding. Um, branch so um I try to avoid painting branch in one go because sometimes it's very tempting to paint branch and set up all the buds on it i like when um, everything flows uh, one into the other and you could mm, just add a little bit more of flow into your painting. So with green color I add some leaves. Magnolia maybe not that famous for, for its uh, leaves, um, but anyway it's nice to add a bit of a greenery. It's not our focal point. Uh, I not pay a lot of attention to greenery, but I find it very, um, very pleasant for an eye when uh, I, your eye see not only flowers on a dry branch, but uh, some greenery around. It makes all the painting, all the painting um, more feminine, more soft. Uh, let's set another bud right here. I will take. I will take alizarin crimson now, but you could just paint everything. In principle, you could paint everything just with one color. That's that's we have to try one day. <laughs> I would like this, but look a little bit to the right. Mm. Firstly, just with big, big, brave brush strokes. I set up the bud. Do you see how I'm actually far away from my drawing? But it's like a skeleton. It helps you uh, to remember the composition, but uh, your hands are free, absolutely free. To make area a bit lighter, I dry my brush with a paper towel and go and remove two bright colors. I want to remove, uh, I want to lighten a little bit the front petal to make it pop up. Now I go back to my dusk pink. I'm very tempting to add a few drops on the top. And always remember, first of all, one dark part, it's the bottom of the bud, bottom of the bud, and second uh, dark part, it's the shade of this flower. And of course, all this left side is in the shade. Uh, these petals, these bottom petals, they kind of in the shade of the bud uh, itself. So, and of course, it's uh, you have to divide some petals. But remember to keep balance and remember to keep in mind the darkest areas. And that will be more of this area. I, <laughs> I wash my brush because I want to soften a little bit a few, few moments here. And add a little bit of details. I suddenly switch to my smaller brush for details because I like the tip of the brush. It allows me to create really nice lines. This is a little bit too dark. So let's let's do it as we did it before. So I would not 
sorry my camera went off for a few minutes i didn't notice that i painted a leaf around but i will be back to painting leaves and you could add it at any point right now i start to paint the middle of oh, the bottom sorry of course bottom bottom flower i would like to paint a little bit more complex so i start with painting one um, petal i leave a little bit of white area i set up another petal we just painting just with bold brush strokes and setting up the beautiful the beautiful flower the beautiful blossom i want uh, this front this bottom uh, flower look on us and be a little bit open so i start to arrange the petals in a way that they show us the open part of the flower here will be um, the moment when bar, uh, when petals they um, divide into the bottom part and to into the upper part and first let's let's paint the bottom petals I paint everything with C strokes. I just uh, turn them into different directions and uh, later on I will add details into our into our beautiful flower. Um, right I switch to another brush and I would like to add first of all I would like to add contrasts as this flower is the open one the sun shines into this middle area and in principle it's the very it's a very very light flower the dark parts are only wall those where the petals they turn a little bit and of course it's in the areas where petals overlapping and the bottom petal gets the shade from the top petal so we emphasize emphasize that areas of course um, a lot of shades are in the bottom part as usual and a lot of shades on the right side so right now i set up mostly most of the shades and details i wash my brush i want to add some softness so i go along those areas which are still wet and i slightly soften the edge edges Uh, I paint sometimes just with the tip of the brush to create this middle, middle nice area. Uh, I would like to paint very bright and bold petal right here. I check out, maybe it's still a little bit wet. So uh, while we are waiting, let's paint um, another branch, another branch. It will be just a small little extra branch around. I allow all my colors mix with each other. And as I said, I try to paint branches in a very um, loose, in a very different way with a, a variety of pressure, more pressure, less pressure. So while we are waiting, let's add some buds into this nice area uh, into this nice branch so 
or now I'm checking out my camera, still working. Uh, Clinacridone rose gives very positive, festive um, feeling, also very fresh feeling. As this dusk bean, it's uh, uh, you could say a little bit mat mature um, shade. So I like to add to use Clinacridone rose for young young buds and uh, dusk pink for open buds, for bigger bud, for bigger blossoms. So mixing all these things. So some greenery, I promised to show you greenery painting, leaves painting, pretty easy. You start with the tip of the brush, you apply pressure on your brush, then you release the pressure. Then you go back to the top, same thing, a little bit more pressure, less pressure, and release the pressure. And if you leave a little bit white area in between, it gives a feeling of middle wine, which is very, very uh, deep in magnolia flowers, magnolia, in magnolia leaves. Now let's paint one more leaf. More pressure, less pressure, more pressure, and less pressure. And some just green, green small little details around. One more leaf, more pressure. Try to add some wiggle moves to your brush so your leaves get their life, their vividness, and add a bold green into the very bottom. So I think now we could switch to the painting of this flower. I take rather bold mix of my dusk pink or mm, your pink if you paint just in pinks and I go with the same C stroke as we did before, but it's overlapping with the other petal. And I add some curviness and bring it all to this area, to the bottom area of the bud. Uh, the bottom part of magnolia petals it's usually very bold sometimes if it's uh, if it is pink magnolias it it is really pink it is bold pink and so we see this petal from its bottom part now what's what's the brush situation what's the brush situation i want to soften everything i go with my clean brush add some softness, distribute colors. Uh, the beauty of painting with granulated colors that you uh, really could add some water drops and it all just <laughs> creates a nicer, nicer mix to everything. Now let's add a little bit more of details. Um, basically, I paint um, sometimes middle lines or these folders on the petals. And now let's paint, let's paint the pestle area. Maybe with sienna so something soft bright brown with very very gentle tipping small tipping moves I create this pestle area it looks like a cone and 
when you paint with small tiny brush strokes it imitates that corn thinning we shouldn't go for more we could better mm, i would like i would like to add one more one more petal here see how now it works better So one more petal and now we have nice middle area very contrast very contrast our flower get gets it volume I could soften few things I think now it's time to add a little bit of softness to all what we created so I go along some, some areas, soften the edge, let our watercolor flow, mix, and just be very, very loose, very loose about this. Uh, of course, it's nice to finish the branch because otherwise it looks a bit unfinished. Let's follow our branch, find the way out. And of course, uh, the more we go to the bottom, the bigger gets the branch, the thicker. So you could show that. maybe one more one more detail one more turn here and maybe one more turn here let's see i do not want to make it too complicated uh queen acridon rose for buds very loose very soft no details just very young small buds a little bit of green color it also brings a nice vibe and now let's have a look maybe something is missing what could be i think one small little branch will balance our composition more pressure less pressure more pressure and basically this is it credon credon rolls for buds oh that was a little bit too bright no problem i have my clean and dumb brush and i just go long and soften soften everything and once i get to the branch it, it starts to bleeding and it's it's very beautiful and it's very nice let's add a few leaves very simple brush strokes no over doing and now it feels like we could really stop at this moment right thank you so much for painting with me i hope you enjoyed the process I hope you felt inspired to paint spring, spring flowers a lot. And please leave me some feedback in comments which flower you would like to paint next. And see you next time. Bye bye.